As more businesses reopen, many employees have a lot of questions about their rights when it comes to returning to work. Joining us with some answers is employment lawyer Lior Samfiro. Lior, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, well, I want to begin, I mean, so many questions obviously have come in. I'm sure you've heard this. Many parents have been called back to work. Still no date in sight for the daycares reopening. Now, we could see or could we see companies forcing parents back to work with this? And given all this, what rights do employees have in the case? Well, Anthony, we certainly are seeing companies trying to force parents, but I think it comes from a lack of knowledge as to what the law is right now. And, and that is this that parents who have school-age children do have a right to stay home with them right now. Uh, provincial governments across the country have amended employment standards le legislation to allow for a leave of absence if you have children knowing that, of course, schools are closed. So in those situations, a parent, and in fact, both parents are allowed to stay home with their school-age children. And th this is a job-protected leave, meaning that then when they are ready to come back to work, the job has to still be waiting for them. So they cannot be penalized, punished in any way. So I think it is a good idea for employees that are feeling that pressure by their employer to remind their employer that they do have that leave of absence and that they cannot be fired or considered to have resigned because they're staying home with their children. An important reminder also, here's another one, 10-day paid sick leave. Uh, we've heard of this proposal. Talk about the implications of this policy being played out. Would it work? The reality is that only provincial governments, for the most part, can implement such a, a law, such a policy, because of the fact that most employees are governed provincially. Now, the concern here, of course, that if employers have to provide these 10 paid sick days, that's going to be a significant cost for employers in a time where employers, many of them, are struggling, and perhaps it is not the best time to impose this new cost on them. And I've already heard for some, from some employers telling me that if we do have to uh, outlay this money to provide these 10 paid sick days, that money is going to have to come from somewhere. Maybe that means we don't hire as many people or let people go. Maybe it means we provide less vacation or, or not upgrade our benefits plan, but the money has to come in from somewhere. So that is a real, real concern. The federal government that announced it perhaps could do something on its end through modifying the EI program to allow employees that are sick to qualify for EI more easily. I do have some real concerns about providing or making employers bear the cost for 10 paid sick days. Okay, what about employees who have been on a temporary layoff? We've heard of this uh, happening throughout the country. Now, their workplaces have reopened. These individuals haven't been asked back to work. Do they have any rights at this point? Do they have their job no matter what? So unfortunately not. Uh, an employer that is not able to recall its employees uh, back then has to terminate their employment. And employees do have significant entitlements. In some cases, that could be as much as two years' pay that employees are owed. Uh, and one thing to remember is that given the fact that it would be arguably harder now to find a new job if you do lose your job, that could actually have an upwards impact on severance. You actually may be owed more severance now because of the pandemic than you would have been before the pandemic. So it's certainly something that employers and employees have to keep in mind. But if you haven't been called back to work, probably the best thing you want to do is reach out to the company, find out what their uh, plans are. For most individuals, depending on where you're at, after 13 weeks, so three months from the date of the layoff, if you're not called back to work, it becomes a termination, and then you're owed your termination entitlements. So it's a reminder there for both employees and employers to, to keep an eye on the clock, so to speak. Okay, what questions should employees be asking their employers before returning to the workplace? A lot of people have these thoughts sitting at home wondering what should we do when we do go back? So the first question, I think the most important question if you are called back to work is find out from your employer what is being done to ensure your safety? What is being done to ensure that social distancing and physical distancing in the workplace is followed, that the number of people in the workplace uh, is limited to ensure that you are safe? That's the number one thing. And employees that are not going to be protected should not be working. Employers that can't protect employees should not be opening. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you want to find out from your employer what is your job going to be? Are you going back to the same job and the same pay, uh, same hours, or is it going to be different? Keeping in mind that employers do not have the right to unilaterally change terms of employment, so you certainly want to get clarity as to whether your job will change and if it does change or how long it's going to be changed. Okay, we only have 30 seconds for this last one, but does an employer have the right to force an employee to work from home? 
An employer cannot force that. That is certainly a significant change to the terms of employment, so not something an employer can do. The better approach is to provide that as an option and work out terms with the employee. That should not be forced, Anthony. Lior Sanfiro, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Lior. Thank you.